We're here today just to praise the Lord. I, for those of you that were here last night, what a wonderful move of God. You know what? And that just doesn't end. It just continues. So we're going to continue in worship today. Let me read to you First Chronicles. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, O Lord. And this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Praise God. Stand with us this morning as we begin to worship God together as a community worshiping God this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your presence was here last night. Your presence was here before we got here this morning. There's never a moment in time where you are not mindful and, and present in the lives of your people. Thank you, God. We just ask that your anointing would flow in our lives, God. Let us be conduits of your mercy and your grace and your powers that moves through us to the community and to those that are around us, God. We praise you this morning. We honor you. And, Lord, we recognize today is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice in it. We will glory in your name this morning. We proclaim it. We declare it. In Jesus' name we pray. And the congregation said together, amen. amen. Praise God. If you want to come up, come on up.
faster than we did last night. I just took it too slow. So we're going to speed it up a little bit here. We have called us out of darkness into your glorious light. One, two, one, two, three. You have called us out of darkness into your glorious light. And we have seen the wonders of the risen Christ. May our every breath we tell the that brought you to our shrine. With boundless love and deepness, so with
Jesus Christ. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Here, here people see. join them this morning. Just mention his name, Jesus, you're holy. God, you're so holy. Oh, we just worship you and you alone this morning. Let us decrease, but increase your praise this morning. You're holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We bless you with our voices today. We speak out your name and say, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus.
cross without you. And in our hearts, we're desperate for us. Christo Santo, Holy Jesus, we thank you for your presence in our midst last night and today because we are a desperate people for you, for your presence, for your holiness. And we're desperate. With that desperation and that need for Jesus, you may return to your seats in an attitude of worship. Hallelujah. Stay here. Stay here. And today being the first day of the month is Mission Sunday. You know, as I look around our, our church, I see babies. I see little kids running around, and it makes my heart glad because they are the future of Bethel, and children are the future of this nation. Yet it saddens me that there's industries that are thrive on eliminating babies. Abortion clinics throughout the U.S. Committing something short of genocide. So I'm glad that Bethel supports two missions that come against this uh, horrific problem. And that is Love Life and PSS, Pregnancy Services, Support Services. So your dollars that you contribute to missions go in part to these missions. So won't you dig deep a little today and give above and beyond your tithes and offerings as the ushers come forth to pick up your offerings? Give a little to missions. Give a lot to missions, however the Lord puts in your mind, because there is a desperate need for the gospel to go out. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you give us. First of all, I pray for these mothers on the cusp of deciding whether to keep their babies. Speak to them, Father. And thank you for missions like uh, Love Life and, and Pregnancy Support Services, Lord, that are standing in the gap for them. Father, I thank you for those that are preparing their offerings today. Move on their hearts to give to missions, Father, till your gospel can go forth. Bless the giver, Father. And Father, we don't give to get. We give to obey you and to love you with our offerings. Because after all, we sang, we're desperate for you. And we're lost without you. So Father, receive our offering as our praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. As the, off, as the ushers are going forward to collect your offerings, I'm going to read you some announcements that uh, our church is very active today. You know, today, rain or shine, ants or no ants, we're going to have a picnic uh, right after service uh, at the uh, picnic uh, ground at Fuse Ford Center. So there's lots of food to be eaten, so won't you come out? People have signed up to bring some, so come on out. Also, on June 10th through the 21st, that's Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at the church, Dove Camp, led by Sister Antoinette Joyner. I don't see her. Oh, there she is. Okay. Led by her, so... Um, it's for, for ages, girls, right? Just girls? All boys and girls, okay. Everybody from the ages of 10 to 14. Uh, if you haven't already seen Sister Antoinette, I call her my woman of God. Um, it's for an application to attend. It's, n it's not too late. And also, on June 15th, as Pastor so aptly described it, men are going to go kill and eat. Well, if you're a kill and eat kind of person, then uh, June 15th will be just for you because the men are getting together to go skeet shooting and shoot poor old defenseless little skeets. <laughs> and then they'll go eat. But there's a sign-up sheep in the foyer, and Pastor Larry has asked me 
vehemently, you need to sign up. And by next Sunday, that'll be the deadline. Because there's going to be food provided. And uh, here's an asterisk. You're going to need to pay for your ammo. And they need to know how much ammo to have ready. And I've been before, and it's, it's not an exorbitant amount that you have to pay for ammo. So please sign up no later than next Sunday. And with that said, Pastor, let's give our great pastor a warm welcome. Well, praise the Lord. Um, we're not going to eat the skeet. <laughs> we're we're going to make barbecue. We're going to shoot the skeet. And then afterwards, uh, we will eat the barbecue. So fear not. Fear not. You, you won't have to uh, enjoy a mouthful of skeet. Uh, also, it is, if you want to, a BYOG. You can bring your own shotgun, uh, or they will have guns there for us. So either way, you can bring yours, or they will provide them. Um, but we do need to have the guys sign up so we know how many are coming out to be a part of that with us. So, I have a couple of other announcements that I'll make in just a minute, uh, but before I do that, today is a really special day. Uh, it's Pastor Don's 83rd birthday. So, I believe he's watching from home this morning, so happy birthday, Pastor. We all love you so very much. And if I can, if I can get the team to help, we're going to sing you happy birthday. So if everyone can join in, I thought it would be sweet for us to sing happy birthday to our pastor. Yeah, ready? Here we go. I'm not going to sing. I'm going to mouth it because it will sound terrible if I sing. So on three, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. love you, Pastor. And uh, if everyone can, let's just all turn around and stretch our hands towards the camera. I want to pray over our pastor this morning. Yeah. Lord, we pray for Pastor Don right now. Lord, and we believe your Holy Spirit is present with him in their home right now. And we believe that, Lord, you are moving and touching him even today on his 83rd birthday that you are giving strength to his body, that you're pouring out healing, Lord, like you poured oil on the head of Aaron. Lord, you are soaking and saturating every cell of his being with your glory, even right now. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you that our pastor gets to celebrate his 83rd birthday, and we are believing for many more in strength, in health, in wholeness, and in the peace of the living God. We thank you for him, Lord, and the years of investment that he has given into Bethel and into Durham and into the body of Christ. So touch him right now by your mighty hand and by the power of the spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Awesome. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Uh, as the worship team is making their way to their seats, uh, I have a couple of more announcements that I wanted to make, and I asked Dan to allow me to make these. Um, you know that we were planning on beginning renovation in the bathroom tomorrow. Um, we are moving that back um, a couple of weeks because I want to make sure that the product that we are putting on the floor in those bathrooms is going to last for generations. And so I am in no rush to jump into something uh, when I've heard in a little bit that it might not be exactly the product that we want. And so I'm taking that time to make sure uh, that it is going to be a tremendous blessing that when we redo that, it's done with the best of quality. 
So we will not be starting that project tomorrow, uh, but I will let you know when we get to that point. Also, we have a number of youth later this month that are going to youth camp. We are unbelievably excited uh, to be able to send them out. They're going to a camp this year in Myrtle Beach that friends of mine uh, and a church that I've known for a long, long time are overseeing and leading that camp. We have some of those youth that could use uh, blessing and covering some of the cost for their trip. And so if you would like to give to help any of those young people make it to camp, please see Miss Teresa uh, and you can give towards helping get all of our kids to camp that want to go to camp. It's super, super important to me that anyone that wants to go has the opportunity to go. And then last but not least, I am very, very excited. Pam, would you stand for me? Uh, Pam and I have been working to start an outreach that will be going into Calix, the assisted living facility, uh, once a month to do outreach and love on that community. That starts this month. And so if you're interested in being a part of that, please see Pam. I've asked her to oversee those monthly visits. We're going to be able to go in, fellowship with people, and do a devotional. Uh, and if we have anyone who can sing or play an instrument, we'll also do some worship with that devotional. Uh, but, you know, my heart is to love on those in our community uh, that others may be overlooking, right, that others might pass by. And I feel like in so many ways that is uh, families and people who are in those care facilities. And so we're starting with Calix, and we'll see what the Lord does with it. Uh, it may expand. We may go there more often. We may add other facilities. Uh, but it's my heart and desire for us to get to do that. And so we're going to start with once a month going in uh, and doing a gathering with them. So please see her if you are interested in being a part. Amen? Amen. Awesome. So, I don't plan on preaching long, but I never plan on preaching long. And so, here we are. Um, <laughs> you know that this morning is week two in our Holy Spirit series. And when you came in, you got the bulletin, and I mentioned it last week if you weren't here with us last week. Uh, the core notes for this entire series are on the bulletin uh, with the points and the verses so that it's not just you hearing me talk about it. You can take it home and dig deeper into the Word of God to develop that strong foundation with the Holy Spirit in your personal life. But I think there is some misunderstanding about the Holy Spirit. And so last week I started by talking about the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus. And we looked at all the things the Holy Spirit did in Jesus' life. This week we're talking about the Holy Spirit at salvation. Because I think it's really important for people to know and understand when they have received the Holy Spirit in their life. And so I want to lay that foundation for you this morning, right? And so we are going to look at what happens when the Holy Spirit is given to the believer at salvation. And it's really important for me to help lay this groundwork for you because I believe there is so much confusion in the church, right? Confusion that should not be there, but here we are, right? And the Bible speaks very clearly about the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, people get in the way, okay? And so we're going to begin this morning looking at the Holy Spirit at salvation, right? And we're going to start in Acts chapter 2. Now, some of you are thinking, oh, the Holy Spirit poured out at Pentecost. Yes, the Holy Spirit was poured out at Pentecost, in a measure of power, right? But also, when Peter gets up to address the crowd at Pentecost, he speaks to the point at which the Holy Spirit enters a believer's life. And that's where actually we're going to start looking at this morning. Acts chapter 2 and verses 38 and 39. Peter replied, he replied to the crowd, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you, your children, and for all who are far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. Right? Go back to verse 38 for me, please. Right? Verse 38 right? Repent and be baptized. 
Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The only thing you need to do to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life is repent and be baptized. Right? I just want to break this thing that's out there, that people don't think they have the Holy Spirit in their life if they're not speaking in tongues. I'm sorry, that is a large misnomer that has like really crippled the body of Christ in so many ways. Right? The Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, is an outward expression of what's already inside you as a believer. You received the Holy Spirit when you got saved. And the Bible makes that abundantly clear. You see it also in Ephesians chapter 1. In Ephesians chapter 1, it says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the Holy Spirit. When you believed, you were marked with the Holy Spirit. Why? Verse 14, because the Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Listen, one third of the Trinity lives in you the day you understand and accept who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for you. Holy Spirit is in you. Right? Whether it was at an altar, whether it was beside your bed in your home, whether it was in a a bar, I don't care where it was. The day you realized, oh my goodness, my life is wrong, I need to change it. The only way I can change it is with what Jesus has done for me. Jesus, come and be with me. Jesus goes, one better, I hear you, I receive you into my kingdom, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, I'm going to give you the same spirit that was in me. And he gives them the Holy Spirit. He gives us the Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit is poured out over us at salvation. Right? And so what is, right? Like when we receive that, what is that like for us as believers? Okay, let's look at that, right? Let's look at who we receive at salvation. Right? John chapter 14, Jesus, right? Written in red. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. That's really important, right? Keep his commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Forever, right? Wasn't just on the day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit was poured out. The Holy Spirit was poured out forever, Right, that's why Peter, later when he stands up in Acts chapter 2, says, this is for you, your kids, and all who are afar off. Peter's like, this, is, this doesn't end. Why? Because Jesus said this doesn't end. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will be with you. In verse 17, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Right? Holy Spirit will be. Right? Why? At this point, Holy Spirit hadn't been poured out. He was fully in Jesus. But we know in John 20, what does it say? Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Did the disciples pray in tongues in John 20? No. They didn't pray in tongues until Acts 2. But nonetheless, they received the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Jesus poured him out. Jesus poured him out to them. Why? Because they believed in him. In John 20, because he was raised to life and he unfolded for them the understanding of the scriptures. Right? Look at John 14 uh, later in the chapter. I think it's verse 26. It says, But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and remind you of everything Jesus said. That's what happens, right? Like when you open this up, what happens is as a believer, Holy Spirit is active in you and you're learning. You're learning how to be like Christ. You call yourself a Christian, a Christ-like one. The only way you be like Christ 
is by what? By learning. And you learn that through the Holy Spirit who lives in you and teaches you. The Holy Spirit is your instructor. He came into your life the day you got saved. The awesome thing is he isn't going anywhere. Because the Lord doesn't give something and then take it away. Holy Spirit has been poured out to you and stays poured out to you. Holy Spirit entered into you and he doesn't leave. He doesn't leave. And we'll, we'll learn later on in this series about the personality of the Holy Spirit. Why? <clears throat> because he's not an it. <laughs> right? Holy Spirit isn't an it. Holy Spirit is one third of the Godhead. Look at my wife. She's so awesome. <clears throat> Thank you. See? Just like that. Just a representation of the Holy Spirit right there. She just brought me refreshing water. <laughs> right? And so we have to understand the Holy Spirit's already in us. Right? When I get saved and I begin to walk with Jesus and I come across something that I know I shouldn't do, that thing in me that goes, you shouldn't do that, that's Holy Spirit. Because the world doesn't think like that. Why? Because the world doesn't know him. Right? That's why the world robs and cheats and steals and rapes and murders and does all kinds of heinous things. Why? They don't have the spirit of the living God inside of them. That's why someone that used to do all of those things now doesn't do those things anymore. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's in them. Right? Listen, that's why Paul, before he was Paul and he was Saul and he was out there killing Christians, thinking he was doing the right thing, completely and totally stopped all of that once he had an encounter with Jesus because the Holy Spirit came into him and he goes, oh wait, everything I was doing was wrong. Now I understand what I need to do and we have most of the New Testament because of that change in his life. Because the Holy Spirit entered into him and he goes, oh wait, all of that was wrong. Although I thought I was doing it in the name of God. Although I thought I was right. Oh wait, I was wrong. And now that the spirit of the living God is inside of me, I realize it. Listen, the Bible he was reading didn't change. What changed? What changed was that he now was reading it through the spirit of truth. Because the Holy Spirit was guiding and directing him into revelation of the Son of God. Right? You see this again in John 16. Right? In John chapter 16, he speaks again. Jesus speaks again about the Holy Spirit. John 16, verse 7. But very truly, I tell you, it's for your good that I'm going away. Wait, hold on a second. If it's for our good that Jesus went away, why all the time do we ask for Jesus to come? I mean, in all truth and honesty, people all the time are like, oh, Jesus, come, Jesus, come, Jesus. Listen, church family, the next time Jesus comes, it's to split the sky and like literally reset everything. He's not coming again before that point. The next time he comes, he's on a white horse with a sword in his mouth and fire in his eyes, right? I'm not ready for him to come like that. <laughs> but what does he say, right? But very truly, I tell you, it's for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. And when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it's from me that he will receive what he makes known to you. And all that belongs to the Father is mine. That's why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Listen, this should be earth-shattering for us as Christians. Because Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Right? Father's on the throne. Jesus is at his right side. And the Bible tells us two different places that Jesus is living to ever make intercession for us. Jesus right now is doing one thing. He's praying. Right? He hasn't stopped praying since he went up there. 
He won't stop praying until he comes back again. He's ever making intercession for us. And here's the awesome thing. He's praying according to the Father's will over us. And then as he's praying according to the Father's will, he tells the Holy Spirit, go and speak that to them so that what the Father wants is done through me by you. And then the Spirit, because he's the ever-present Spirit, is literally there receiving from Jesus the same time he's inside of me. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting on my couch one day, right, like doom scrolling on Instagram, and the Holy Spirit's like, hey, you should call so-and-so. And I'm like, oh, I don't know why, but I suddenly feel like I should call them. And I take out my phone and call them, and they're like, oh my gosh, I needed you to call right now. Why? Because Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father going, they're in trouble. Spirit, Go! And the spirit who's in me goes, hey, you need to do this. Why? Because Jesus is in heaven right now praying for them. And all of a sudden he stirs it in us because he won't do it without us. The Lord's not doing it without us, church family. There's a reason a third of the Trinity lives in us. It's because that's the master plan from the beginning. Ephesians tells us, like, from the beginning, this was God's plan, the church, right? It was God's idea to use a bunch of misfits to change the world. And the awesome thing is, somehow, it works. (laughs) Like, it really, really works. And so, when the Holy Spirit moves in us as a church... All of a sudden, all the old way we used to do things fades away. Bitterness fades away. Anger fades away. Selfishness fades away. And now you have people who are giving and loving and caring and uplifting one another. And the world looks at it and goes, I don't understand. Why are they doing that? Right? The world doesn't understand why people give money away in the church. The world doesn't understand why someone is willing to leave the business world and go into the jungles of some foreign country and live on nothing to love on people that don't know the Lord and do it with joy in their hearts. The world doesn't understand it. Why? Because the world doesn't have the Spirit. But we have the Spirit. And so we fully understand what God's doing. Because the Spirit that lives in us, we realize, oh yeah, we weren't made for this world. This is temporary. This whole thing is passing, right? We were made to live with the Lord. We were made to be with Jesus. And so as all of this fades, that becomes more real. That becomes more real, right? I, I, my wife and I joke all the time. She asked me to like years ago to get life insurance because I was traveling the world so much. And she was like, you, you constantly have your mind set on like eternity and all that stuff. She's like, I'm a little worried you're going to die a little sooner than I would like. She's like, I need to know that I'm well taken care of, right? She's like, so I would like you to go get some life insurance. And I was like, okay, sure. So I got life insurance in case the Lord took me home, whatever he did, that my wife was also taken care of, right? But it was because in this world, my heart isn't home here. And my heart isn't home here because the longer I've lived with the Lord, the more like him I want to be. And his heart wasn't home here. Right? Jesus left the glory of the Father to come and die for us. And then did what? He returned to that glory. He came here to do the purpose for which he was sent. Nothing more, nothing less. And when he had fulfilled that purpose, he returned to the Father. And in returning to the Father, he poured out the Spirit for all of us so the Spirit would help us understand this world isn't home for us either. This isn't home. We're passing through. But what we have to understand, right, is when the Lord poured out the Spirit on us, like, who did we receive? Right, who did we receive? That, that word there in Greek is parakletos, right? Who is that counselor? Who is that advocate? Right? It has a deep and rich meaning. Right? It actually means multiple different things. It can mean intercessor. It can mean consoler. It can mean advocate. It can mean comforter. It means all of those things at the same time. That word was used in the Greek language to represent legal counsel. Right? One who pleads a case or an aid or, or a helper. Right? Let that like rock your world. Because it rocks mine all the time. When I realize 
that the purpose of the Spirit is to go to and from the Father and Son to me, to bring revelation, to bring understanding of what I need, right? So when I'm sitting in the court of this world and the enemy, Satan, is bringing accusation against me and I'm unsure how to handle it, right? I'm going through medical stuff right now. And in my human nature, as I'm walking through this, my human nature all the time wants to go, this is going to end very badly. This is going to end very poorly. But you know what's awesome? Is as I'm sitting in that seat, As I'm sitting in that seat of humanity and I'm hearing the judge of this world before me going, you're going to die early, you're going to leave your wife and kids a bit. Like, as I'm hearing that, all of a sudden I look over and someone comes and sits down beside me and opens the most awesome briefcase you've ever seen. Right? Why? Because it's empty on the inside. Why? Because he knows everything. <laughs> he doesn't need anything to be in there. And when he sits down beside me, he goes, I got this. And I'm like, oh, good, because I have no idea what's going on. (laughs) And he looks at the judge and goes, your honor, he's covered. And the judge is like, how is he covered? And he goes, he believes. Believes in what? The Lord is his savior. And, And I'm like, I do believe. I do. I am covered. And he's like, and that's all he needs, because now he has me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I do have you. You live inside me. You're with me all the time. And he's like, yeah. I'm your advocate, I'm your comforter, I'm your counselor, I'm your helper, I got this. And he goes, you don't need to say anything else. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness, right? And so then he takes what? Takes on my behalf what I can't do. Why? Because 0.2 milliseconds ago, he was standing within the glory of the God that spoke heaven and earth into being. And now he's here with me. And when he's standing in the presence of the God that he was with when it was all spoken into being, as he helped Jesus live that sinless life that I need, he's instantaneously there with me. Because from the day I said, Jesus, I need you, Jesus said, I got you. And he gave me the Spirit. He didn't give me the Holy Spirit for thrills and chills. He gave me the Holy Spirit to lead me into the character of being like Christ. Fall down all you want in church. If that's the sum total of the Holy Spirit to you, you are missing him in a tremendous way. Should I be able to contain him in my human body? Not in his fullness. No way. I've done unbelievable things when the Holy Spirit has moved on me at times in a powerful way. But I've also at times had clarity of mind when I didn't know it was there because the Holy Spirit was moving just as much then as he was when I was in a powerful church service. Same spirit, same advocate, same counselor, same helper. He didn't change. I I can remember years ago, Sharon and I, we were in a nation in Asia, a closed nation, communist nation. We had taken a team of young missionaries to preach the gospel in this closed nation. We crossed the border and I was taken immediately into interrogation by the communist police of that nation. Do what? (laughs) Sharon said that's why she asked me to get life insurance. But literally, I'm sitting in in an interrogation chamber, right? Just concrete walls. Guy across the desk, two military officers sitting literally side beside me like this, and I'm sitting in a chair, and I have my interpreter behind me. And they're grilling me, wanting to know why I'm in that nation. And listen, all they actually had to do was open my backpack that was sitting on the floor beside me because it had all kinds of Christian material, my Bible, all that stuff. But they had taken my passport and locked it in a safe in the wall and were grilling me grilling me. And let me tell you, church family, I had peace that passes understanding. I had total peace, total peace. Afterwards, I cried like crazy. In that moment, I had total peace, (laughs) total peace. And as they're grilling me, grilling me, grilling me, I mean, it was, I don't even know for sure exactly how long it was. It felt like a long time. Yeah. Sharon said it was about an hour. 
all of a sudden, as I'm sitting there, being grilled by these guys, Holy Spirit says into me, make them laugh at you like a dumb American. And I was like, what? <laughs> and the Lord goes, make them laugh at you like a dumb American. He said, start doing silly hand signals to them, and they'll let you go. And so I go like this. I said to the guy across the counter, I live in Florida in America. Like that, I go like this. <laughs> Florida in America. I said, you come to America. Fly on airplane. I go like this. <laughs> fly on airplane. Like that's an airplane. It's like a moth or a cicada, you know? I was like, fly on airplane. You come, I take you on tour. You see America. And the guy goes, <laughs> like that. And he starts laughing at me. He starts laughing at me. And he turns around, on the spot, turns around, unlocks the safe, takes my passport, hands it to me, and goes, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> I picked up my bag. I walked out the door. Our team went into that nation. One of the most awesome trips we've ever, ever been on. We went into that nation. And the leadership that was there, like, met us in the hotel, and he was like, we've never had something like this happen. And I was like, we're okay here. Why? Because in that moment, the Holy Spirit was just as much in me there as he was when I'm laying hands on the sick. Just as much. Different, it's not a different Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. That same advocate, that same comforter, that same counselor, that same one that was poured out at the day of Pentecost in power, which we'll look at, in a couple of weeks, was poured out before Pentecost by Jesus onto his disciples to be the advocate in them, to be the helper in them. And so many Christians want the power side of the Holy Spirit. But the problem, church family, is you don't get the power side without actually living with him day to day. Right? You don't deserve the power that was poured out on Jesus if you're not willing to live like Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Right? If you're going home and gossiping, if you're watching trash on TV, if you're doing all this kind of stuff, why would the Holy Spirit pour power out through you? Because you're not actually being like Christ. Because it's the same Spirit. He was poured out on you. He's not here just on Sunday morning, and then when you go through the doors, he like stays behind. And then you go home, and then when you come back through the doors on Wednesday, he like re-enters you again. No, no, he came into you at salvation. He hasn't left you. And every decision you've ever made since you got saved, Holy Spirit has been in you. Every time you've been angry with someone, Holy Spirit has been in you. Every time you've been bitter, Holy Spirit's been in you. Every time you've been joyful, and every time you've been peaceful, right? Holy Spirit is in you the same way he was in Jesus. He didn't go anywhere. And if we want to be a church that moves in the outward power of the Holy Spirit, we have to first be moved by the internal helper and comforter of the Spirit. That we're willing to deal with everything here before we want to deal with everything in someone else. We're willing to allow the Lord to speak to us here and to minister to us here before we go after it in other people. And so there's five ways that I really see that the Holy Spirit does this in us, right? How does he help us in our day-to-day -day life, right? How does the Holy Spirit empower us and, and advocate for us and comfort us in the day-to-day, -day? right? Number one, he helps us worship. Holy Spirit helps us in worship. Philippians 3.3 3 says, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Right? When we did worship last night, when we did worship this morning, that was in the Spirit. Why? Because people who aren't saved don't sing things like that to God. <laughs> right? Unsaved people come in and go, why are you singing about being covered in blood? That's gross. But the moment Holy Spirit's in you, when you're really saved, you sing it. Because why? You understand by spiritual revelation what it means. So we rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. Why? Because we have all confidence in the Spirit. It's not by me. Right? It's not by works so that no one can boast. Right? It's the Spirit of the living God. 
When Jesus met the Samaritan woman in John 4, what did he tell her? True worshipers worship in what? In spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. How often, and I mean this with so much love, but it's going to sound harsh. Bear with me. How often do we sing not in truth? How often do we sing songs that are actually lies to God? Because we don't really mean what we're saying in that song. We don't really mean, Lord, I'll give you my all. We don't really mean, Lord, you're my everything. We don't really mean, Lord, I lay it all at your feet. Because you've laid 99 things, but you've held on to that, that, that other one. Right? How often do we actually not worship in spirit and in truth? But when the Holy Spirit is really leading us, when the Holy Spirit's really moving in us, all of a sudden it becomes easier to worship in spirit and in truth. Why? Because we don't want to hold on to anything of this world. We don't want any of that to remain in us, right? The closer we get to being like Jesus, the less we care about this world, but the more effective we become in this world, right? Because what do people say of Jesus? Oh, he's a friend of, of prostitutes and drunkards and all that kind of stuff. But nonetheless, people flocked to be where Jesus was, except for the highly religious, Right? And then they wanted to do what? Question him, accuse him, kill him. Right? But the world was drawn to him. Why? Because they saw the most real thing they'd ever laid eyes on. That's what will draw people to us. That's what will get people to ask us things like, why, why are you so peaceful all the time? Right? Why are you not worried about how crazy things are going to be this political season? Why are you not X? Why are you not Y? Why are you not Z? And you go, I have the Lord. And they'll go, well, but I know other people who say they're Christians. And you go, I can't judge them, but I know for me, this is the difference maker. Right? And you begin to engage them in conversation. Right? But listen, in worship, as we come together, like last night, it was so sweet in this place. This morning, it was so sweet in this place. And it was because the Holy Spirit was moving in worship. Right? He was stirring we didn't have to ask the Holy Spirit to come. He was already here. He was already here. But we do want him to move. We do want him to have his way, to guide and direct. Right? And so the Holy Spirit helps us in worship. Number two, the Holy Spirit helps us to overcome sin. The Holy Spirit helps us to overcome sin. That's why the longer you walk with the Holy Spirit, the less sin issues should be in your life. Right, Galatians 5.16. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit and you won't, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Right, because people in the world are constantly given in to the desires of their flesh. The more you walk with Holy Spirit, the less that has a hold or a grip on you. Because what's happening, you're being changed into Christ-like character every day. Another layer, right? The Bible says from glory to glory, from deep to deep, right? Every day, you're moving with the Lord. And all of a sudden, like the things of this world have less hold on you. Things that used to upset you don't upset you anymore. Why? You have the Holy Spirit in you, right? And the world has less of a hold. You gratify those desires less, right? And the awesome thing is, over time, it actually becomes pretty easy to walk with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you've given him all these different areas of your life. You've given him your heart. You've given him your mind. You've given him direction in your body. And so it's easier to stay with him and to flow with him and to move with him because you've been doing it. Right? I mentioned it last night. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I got saved when I was five. Holy Spirit came into my life. Right? Then I began to speak in tongues at age seven. Right, so I, I'm going on 45 this year. I've had the Holy Spirit in my life for 40 years. For 40 years. I'm nowhere near the person that I used to be. Right, I don't make the choices or do the things that I used to do. Do I still slip here and there? Sure, I'm human. But I'm much quicker to realize those things and pursue change because the Holy Spirit is so much clearer in my heart and mind to speak to me. And so I don't gratify what I used to gratify. I gratify the Lord. I gratify the Spirit. Number three, he gives a life to our natural bodies. He gives life to our natural bodies. Right? And this is one 
at times it's difficult for believers to grasp because it's such a battle in this world, right? When it comes to like our health and all that kind of stuff because of all of the different things that we're going through. But nonetheless, the promise of scripture is that the Holy Spirit will help our natural bodies. Romans 8, 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body because of his spirit who lives in you. Right? Corinthians says what? We're the temple. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right? So if I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit, I need to take care of the temple. Right? I need to care about what the spirit is living in. So I don't do things the way the world does, right? I don't run to alcohol if I used to run to alcohol. Why? Because Ephesians tells me, right, instead of getting drunk on wine, be filled with the Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit does everything in me that alcohol used to do. Right? If alcohol makes you like all internal and contemplative, Holy Spirit wants to do that. If alcohol makes you all social and outgoing and like the life of the party, Holy Spirit wants to do that. He wants to do everything that you used to run to this world for. He wants to do that in you. Why? Because he's in your body. So you don't need to go to those things anymore to have encounter with joy and peace and to have issues dealt with. You can go to the Holy Spirit. Because that's what he does in us. The same way he did it in Jesus. Number four, the Holy Spirit helps us pray. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Romans 8, verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. When we don't know what we should pray for, the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Right? When you don't know what to pray, Holy Spirit can begin to download to you what to pray. He can begin to reveal to you what to pray. And sometimes you don't have words to express it. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's just groans. Sometimes it's just like an ache. Sometimes it's just like there are times when I want the Lord to do something so much, I don't literally have the words to say. I'm just like, ah. And I'm like, oh, there's Holy Spirit. (laughs) Why? Because he's the one praying through me in accordance with the will of God. Right? And God's will is perfect. God's will is perfect. God's will and plan for you is perfect. And so often we pray things according to our own desires, our own wants, We pray things according to how we feel like it should go, and the Lord's like, oh, I can't answer that prayer for you. Right? The Lord's like, I can't answer that prayer for you because you're praying according to your will. You're not praying according to my will. But then there are times when we finally, like, get all of us emptied out, and we're like, Lord, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Help. And all of a sudden, we begin to feel that stir. And that's Holy Spirit now finally beginning to say, oh, okay, now you're at the place where I can start bringing the Father's will. Right? You're like, oh, Lord, 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 lead that family member of mine to salvation. Lord, lead them to salvation. Lord, lead them to salvation. And the entire time you're saying that, the Lord's like, I want you to go witness to them. And all of a sudden, you finally get emptied all out, and you feel that little whisper of the Spirit, like, I want you to go. And you're like, oh, Lord, I send somebody else. <laughs> And then you start praying your will again. Send somebody else, God. Send somebody else, God. Send somebody else. And the Lord's like, no, that's not what I wrote when I formed you in your mother's womb. This is part of your story. And all of a sudden, now when you get back into the will of God again, there it is. And you're like, okay, Lord, I'm going to go. Right? You go and witness to him. It goes terrible. Right? They're upset with you. Right? How dare you tell me how to live my life? You know? And you walk away and be like, Lord, I don't understand. They didn't get saved. And the Lord's like, no, no, salvation's mine. Right? I just ask you to do what I ask you to do. And then all of a sudden you find out like weeks later, somebody else comes and talks to them and they get radically saved. You're like, but wait, what what about what I did? The Lord's like, yeah, yeah, no, you were just a part. That's what happens when we allow Holy Spirit to begin to move through us. That's what happens when we allow the Lord to speak and, and to use us. 
And the fifth one, the fifth area, right? The Holy Spirit reveals God to us. And this one is so tremendous to me. I challenge you this week to read this section of scripture multiple times. There is so much in the next five verses we're going to look at together that you could unpack it for a week to two weeks' time. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul writing to the Church of Corinth says, However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no human mind has conceived the things God has prepared for those who love him. Right? And we love to quote that verse. But here's the thing. We stop there when we shouldn't. We should continue on to verse 10. These, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. Everything we just read about, things that no eye can perceive, no mind can lay hold of, those are the things the Holy Spirit reveals to us. Because he searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Right? What have we received? Right? It's not the spirit of this world. It's the spirit who is from God so we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught in human wisdom, right? But in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spiritual words. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, right? They consider them foolish, right? And they can't understand them because they're only discerned by the spirit. Listen, all the things of God you want to know are revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. Right? You want to know more about what God's saying in here? Holy Spirit will give you that revelation. Because the Holy Spirit reveals all of the things of God to us. But so often, right, we don't lean in to the Holy Spirit the way we should. We don't try to have the Holy Spirit lead us day to day. It's one of the things I have loved about my wife for for over a decade as I've watched. So often, so many days, Sharon will wake up and go, Lord, what do you want to do today? Right? And the Lord will lead her on like crazy journeys, like wild things. I've watched as the Lord has given her the names of total strangers and, and had her withdraw money from the bank and take it to coffee shops And literally revealed that person to her. And she already knows their name. Why? Holy Spirit. So then when she goes up to give them the money, they're like totally shocked that she knows their name. Why? Because she woke up that day and she said, everything that's yours, Lord, is mine. So reveal just a little bit of it to me today. And the Lord will go, oh, I've got a daughter in need over here. Go, Sharon Galloway. And she's like, right? Like she just goes. I love it. I love it. But church family, that's what the Lord wants to do in all of us. He wants to reveal things that were hidden and make them known. He wants to lay it all out before our eyes. But we can't and won't get there if we don't walk daily with the Holy Spirit. If we don't allow him to take a regular part in our lives, we won't see revival or the outpouring of God the way our hearts long for. We won't. Because the Lord's not pouring out power just for the sake of pouring out power. The Lord's pouring out power to a people that are worthy of him pouring out power. And that's a people that are walking in that daily relationship with him. You see the great moves of God with Azusa or the Hebrides or Cane Ridge or or Brownsville or, or the Welsh outpouring or these different things, Seoul, South Korea. You don't see the Lord just randomly show up one day 
and do something wild with people. No, 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 no. Those people have been pursuing God for months and years before he pours himself out on that scale. Why? Because they were taking their daily lives and getting it into the spirit. So they were ready when he poured out greater measure. They were a prepared people when all of a sudden God ratcheted things up a couple of notches. One of the greatest successes that Satan has had has been getting Christians to misunderstand the Holy Spirit. I genuinely believe it. So many people coming to church and they're like, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Right, come here, Matt. Come here, Matt. Come here, come, come here, Matt. Come here, Matt, come here. Right, here's the thing. From the first time I asked, Matt came. I don't need to keep asking Matt to come. He's here. It's that way with the Holy Spirit. From the first time we asked, he came. We now need to acknowledge that he's here. And we need to ask him to be utilized the way God wants from the time he came. From the first time I asked, Matt came. Why? Because we have a relationship. It's that way with the Lord. From the first time you asked, he poured his spirit out. Why? Because you entered into a relationship. And now that he's here, I don't need to keep asking him to come. No, no, no. I need to understand he's here. And now ask him to do what he was sent here to do. Will you play the keys for me? <laughs> that was the purpose in him coming. I don't need to keep asking him to come. Right? It's a silly illustration, but I hope you understand. It's that way with the Holy Spirit. Right? He's, he's already in this room. He's with you when you're in the aisle way at Walmart. He's with you when you're doom scrolling Instagram. He's with you when you're watching whatever version of the news you watch. He's with you. You don't need to ask him to come. You do need to ask him to have his way. You do need to ask him to speak clearly. You do need to ask him to give you strength or wisdom or understanding or those things. Why? Because he's with you and now you need to allow him to flow through you and out of you to do what he came to do. Right? From Pentecost, he was poured out in power. Before Pentecost, he was poured out in salvation. Right? John 20. From John 20, he was released over those who believe. And according to Peter, he is continually released over those who believe. But what will you do with such a great gift that has been given you? How will you choose to walk out your day-to-day -day life with the one who is beyond measure? Right? Ephesians 3 says we can't ask or, or think or imagine what God has in store. Right? But according to his power at work in our lives. Right? You can imagine wild things for God. I promise the Lord has greater things in store for you. But you got to allow Holy Spirit to move. Can I get the rest of the worship team to, to come up? I just want to ask everyone to stand together this morning. We're going to go back into this one worship song. This is the way I really felt led to close today's service. We're going to sing, breathe one more time. And I felt the presence of the Lord so strongly on it the first time that we sang it. And this time, I just want you to take into heart some of what I've shared this morning and digest personally with Holy Spirit. What's he saying? What's he doing? right? Where am I missing his presence in my life so that when I walk out of here today, I can realign that and get that right. Go ahead, guys. This is the air. This is the air.
even for those that may stumble across this message five years, seven years, ten years from now. Lord, I pray that we would come to that place that we truly understand who is with us and in us. That we would truly understand one third of the Godhead is dwelling with me right and that I would be open to the leading, that we would be open on a greater scale to the leading of your spirit. Not just when we're together in church on Sundays and Wednesdays, but every day. That our daily walk would be empowered by your spirit. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done in this place today. I believe you are literally changing minds, bringing revelation, shifting understanding in our community in preparation for something amazing. So help us, Lord. If there is any confusion, help us to continue to come into understanding. If there's any doubt, help us to continue to go deeper in faith. If there's any fear or worry, help us to enter into peace. And I ask that today, Lord, you would bless us. As we go forth from this place, Lord, as we go to share in the joy of a picnic and fellowship together, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would be so real and so strong in every conversation, from the simplest of things kids talk about, Lord, to the deep things that adults might speak of, to everything in between, that our time of fellowship, Lord, would be with you, in you, that, Lord, you would laugh as much as we laugh. We thank you for what you're doing in us, to us, and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you all so very much. Please take this week, decompress with these scriptures, right? Allow the Lord to really get this deep in your spirit. All right, love you all. We will see you, uh, for those of you that are coming at the picnic in a few minutes.